closed the gap up in the breaking zone for the Timothy Kane and closed up again on the brakes into the first corner. Rossi still leads her. The last time we really saw a shootout for the win between Rossi and Marquez for this length of time. Cashy lines back to Pisano last September and it was Rossi that pressured Marquez into a mistake. Was it Marquez actually crashed out of second place and Rossi went on to win the race. We ride with Mar Marquez but win this season. Austin in Texas. It's happening behind this pretty frantic stuff. And there's Andre and only then you see a Lacey Spider, a Polar Spider, Andre Vincioso. It's Cal Cruxler in there, he certainly is. Bradley Smith, Danilo Petrucci. It's the same Petrucci, I think he's past Petrucci now, isn't he? These eight riders here, they're split by about two seconds. It's a great battle for fifth place. They're still trying to close the gap on Andrea Ginoni. The latest rider in fifth, he's three tenths of a second behind uh, the Italian. You know he's doing another exceptional job. The lead to catch it yet again. He hasn't finished outside of the top six so far this season. 16 and a half laps to go. There's Valentino Rossi still leading this. This is where Valentino Rossi just is able to stretch out a little bit of an advantage on Mark Marquez. That new Yamaha chassis offering a little bit more agility. They come down to the final chicane. Marquez close again to Rossi. So they cross the line there. It's 16 laps to go. Is Rossi playing? What can Marquez do? It's so right back that through that really crucial part of the circuit, it comes to the chicane, comes to the start finish. Rossi has got the advantage here. Marquez, you keep thinking he's going to get close enough, but then he loses that. Perhaps he's going to have, to have a go, perhaps somewhere else. Perhaps coming down through the beanstalk in a minute, as we come through the Struben corner. Rossi's talked all weekend about this new upgraded factory Yamaha chassis, about how it's made the bike feel even more agile than what it was. We know the Yamaha was a sweet handed motorcycle before. We're circling through these faster sections where that agility, when you need those fast changes in direction, this is where Rossi will have just a slight advantage. We'll see Marquez so, so strong in the braking zone thanks to that medium option front tyre. And Andrea Vincioso has finally moved into sixth place by Paul Spargo. Next in line for him will be number 41, a Lacey Spargo on the factory Suzuki. Of course, on that soft option rear tyre. It's all about this battle at the front between number 46, Valentino Rossi and Mark Marquez, the reigning world champion, desperately trying to win for the second time this season. Again, his championship challenge back on track after a nightmare in the Joe and Barcelona. It's a race we've been waiting for all season, isn't it? You can't speak highly enough about Valentino Rossi because uh, he's had his problems in practice in qualifying. He's sort of out now. Marquez, for obvious reasons, has been as cautious as he can because he doesn't want to repeat the crashes. And, well, it's... Rossi running up pace that Marquez can't overtake him. Look what's telling about that picture there. Marco Renzo has dropped right out of victory contention. We saw he was struggling to run with Rossi and Marquez. He's now 3.7 seconds back on Valentino Rossi. It's game over for Lorenzo in terms of the race win. Unless something happens between Rossi and Marquez. We're back again with this fantastic battle for fifth place. The Vincenzo just stretching away from Paulus Fargo. He tries to hunt down his Ducati teammate Andre Yindon. There's Cal Cruxo and Bradley Smith. Bit of British pride that stayed there between those two. As well as the battle for the top non-faction rider status. We're on board with Bradley Smith. There's Cal Cruxo. Cruxo on the inside there of the latest Spargo. So Cruxo now up into seventh place. That is a fabulous battle at the fifth place. Danny Pedrosa now on the inside and around his head. So Pedrosa had that big crash in the morning warm up just finding a little bit of fun. There's Andre and Andy in fourth place. Been a bit of a lonely fourth place for him. He's a teammate. Andre and Vincent Sanz has worked really, really hard to get up in the fifth place. Back with Rossi and Marcus. I was just about to say, Danny Pedrosa in that group, battling for fifth place. He's by far the quickest rider in that group. He's about to half a second quicker than Smith Crutchlow and Paul Espargo. This is through the final chicane. Rossi still leads the way as he has done right from the start of this race. He got a great start from pole position by Marquez, the only rider that's been able to match the Italian's pace. We've got 14 laps of this classic Dutch TT race remaining. Back 
to this brilliant fight. Cal Crooks right now has got ahead of Pollock's bar. That's a laser smile. Looks like he might have made a mistake on the chicane because he's dropped all the way back behind Smith and Pedrosa. And so the Smith's Smith got past Pedrosa, is it? And Pedrosa got past Smith and the Danny. You, you blink and it changes, don't you? All these riders now, they're holding up Danny Pedrosa because he's clearly the fastest of this group. You can see Pedrosa now. He's got Bradley Smith right in front of him. We said on the previous lap, Danny Pedrosa by far and away, head and shoulders in terms of black pace of these riders. It's Davizio so fifth, Cruxlo six back at the front. Valentino Rossi just can't get a moment's rest from Mark Marquez. You just wonder when Marquez might strike for the front. He's sat behind Rossi now. He'll have a perfect understanding of the strengths and weaknesses on this 2.82 mile circuit for Rossi's Yamaha. At the moment, Marquez pretty happy just to sit there see what Rossi's got. Uh, yesterday, if you think of it, Marcus was running high 39 pace, black and quite loving that, even Jorge Lorenzo, so I do wonder what those guys might have left in their, in their tank, because Valentino Rossi, he was also low 42, so low 49, so a little bit slower at the moment, and those guys were doing that on some pretty used tyres, so I still think that, you know, I still think they've got an awful lot of pace left for this race. So they cross the line, there will be 13 laps ago, sometimes it's yeah, you like to see 10 rider battles, sometimes you like to see a strength duel, don't you, between two riders. And this is the championship leader and the world champion. Jorge Lorenzo is going to have to settle for third place. I mean, let's be honest, it's not the end of the world for Jorge Lorenzo after a full strength win. I'm not sure about this at the front. Marquez has not made any sort of move yet, has he? And Rossi is good running a good pace at the front and he's pretty far through that last fourth sector. But surely at some stage, Marquez will make a move. Yeah, what's been noticeable so far about Mark Marquez, he hasn't looked right on the ragged edge like he has in previous races. That's a factory hold that looks pretty stable here, I have to say. Valentino Rossi, he's ridden an absolute faultless race at the front so far. He has not put a foot right. He's hitting the same apex, the same braking markers at every corner. He has to, because he's coming under immense pressure from Mark Marquez. There's Alex Marquez, younger brother, anxiously watches on as his brother desperately tries to take the lead from Valentino Rossi. Rossi again just inks out a bit of time through this fourth set to do it. Yeah, guys, just a quick update on there, Stefan Brandt. So he has been taken to the edge of the clinic of over left in the medical centre for some right to risk pain and he's got posted on what happened. This is the quick, this is the biggest gap we've seen between Rossi and Marquez, Nick, for a few laps now. There's Rossi, there's Marquez again though. You can just see the benefit in the braking zone of that medium option front tire. He's able to close right up on the Rossi. Rossi's so fast with that fourth sector, he's not close enough, is he? They're up at the hard bottom corner, but it's 12 laps to go. Who is playing the game? So are they both absolutely on the limit? Who's got a bit in the regime? Here's Hoyle Lorenzo, as you said, rightly say, Matt, you know, it's a significant that his times just can't match them. Dragon only having a low meal riding forth like behind him, but what is happening? We are about to find out. Because it's uh, De Vincio's and Crutch, the Paul Esparga, Pedroza, and Lace Esparga, Bradley Smith, they're all in a tremendous battle. Probably a bit more for sixth place and fifth place now. But I'm not sure about that because there is Cal Crutchlow right behind De Vincioso. So that's De Vincioso and Crutchlow. Got a quick glimpse of Paulus Barber. All the scrapping going on behind Andre Yanoni has given him a chance to bolt away in fourth place. He's now two seconds clear of Andre De Vincioso. Here we are back at the front again. Still Valentino Rossi that leads the way from Mark Marquez. We're coming up to the part of the circuit where Rossi is exceptionally strong. The agility of that new young Marsh actually really coming into its own through these fast changes of direction. Run for Mir, Tiger Holder and Ramshaw. What's the gap now between Marquez and Rossi? Three tenths of that second. There's a masterclass. We've seen it so often the other way, haven't we? But Rossi done putting the pressure on the man at the front. Marquez and others over the years, and this time it's the other way round. La Palenda telling Marquez they're telling really that Lorenzo's not in it, and it's just you and Valentino Rossi to decide who is going to win this Dutch TT. 85th running of the Dutch TT. Crutchlow has moved up into fifth place ahead of Andrea De Vizio. So this has been a great fight between these two. Of course, former teammates at Tech 3 Yamaha, former teammates last year together at the county. Carl Crutchlow, he'll love to put one over on Andrea De Vizioso here in Assen.
where both of them had a difficult recent run. Crutchlow, no points in the last three races. The Vizioso, no points in the last two. This is a great move. Classic asphalt retain by Ralph Crutchlow. Leaves his braking a little bit later than the man in front. Dives up the inside of Andrea De Vizioso. Perfectly executed move. Now let's see the speed of that Ducati. No, the Hondas, no slouch. Cal Crutchlow. He's uh, definitely going to defend that line through there. So Crutchlow up into an excellent fit. Yeah, we to the top now and go back at it, back at the front, you've got to say. But well, we say this every single time down, down at this bottom end of the circuit. Marquez is very close indeed. This is where Rossi is so, so quick. Marquez just can't get close enough at the tank. He'll start opening the gap up now, Rossi, up through the high of heart, up towards uh, the ram shot. This is where he halted it, Marquez. He'll ride with Rossi. I've got to say, Marquez is this close to this time round. Rossi again defends that inside line. He won't let Marquez get up the inside of him there. These two are doing almost identical lap times. Let's have a check as they cross the line now. It's complete lap number 16. A 133.819 from Rossi. A 133.665 from Marquez. Well, they went into on that last lap, a full second for the Marquez. Well, I, think, I think they've now both up the pace, and that's, and that's now the, uh, the uh, true potential that they show in those practice sessions. Uh, be interesting to see what Lorenzo can do because Lorenzo was also lapping very consistently in the high uh, in the high 33. Uh, this is the battle we've all been waiting to see, and we have got it. The jewel of the champions, nine times world champion Valentino Rossi, the world champion for the last two years in MotoGP, Mark Marquez. Rossi holds firm. Marquez ready to pounce. Yeah, it's a race he's been waiting for. And Marquez closing up probably as close as he's been throughout the race. Oh, Rossi, will he try and surprise him somewhere? To try and sneak the lead. Oh, he almost did it down at the, the bolt corner. Yeah, Rossi just took a tear off up there as he came out of that stack and valve. Marquez closed with it. Looked like actually Marquez has gone into full attack mode. He might have been able to yeah, dive up the I, inside. I, I think you're right. And, Three or four Grand Prix ago, he may have done that, but he's fighting this time. Now this is this is where he's got to try and stay close with Rossi. He is very, very close indeed. They come up from the ramshot corner. Can he find any sort of advantage through the left hand before they break to the chicane? Once again, Rossi very, very strong on the right, and he just won't leave any sort of gap for Marquez to find his way through. Over the line they go. Nine classic laps left here in Assen. Further down the field, we've lost Eugene Laverty in the field, and he's crashed out by the OK. There is Laverty. Chelsea won with a bit of four successive point scoring finish, winner of the World Super Sport Race and World Super Bucks here. Thankfully, he's on his feet. That's down at uh, number 11. That's near the Dulka Schloop corner. Back at the front, this is at the Stroom, but still Valentino Rossi leads the way. Mark Marquez hasn't as yet shown Rossi a wheel, not shown his hand just yet. He is going to have a go at some stage. Yeah. He's he Mark Marquez, he just, he's, just, he's just not in his jeans. At some point he's going to have to go. But you would imagine the way Rossi is riding, and when he does, he's going to take a big risk. I think he's right down it to Bolt. He absolutely thought about it, and he's very, very close this time round as well. Is he going to make a move for the first time in the race? We ride with Rossi right in his face, number 93. But it's not close enough once again as it comes down to the bottom end of the circuit and the Mandeman corner. This is as smooth and as controlled. I've seen Mark Marquez ride for a long, long time. We know he's reverted back to the 2014 chassis here this weekend. That factory RC213, but it's a hybrid mode style with that 2015 engine, 2015 swing arm with last year's frame, just to try and get some of the feeling of confidence back that Mark has lost with this this year's frame. He said he can be much more precise with this year's bike, but there's no room for error. He's not made a mistake so far. He's not looked like he's going to run into the back of Rossi like we've seen him make mistakes before this year. Not close enough down into the first corner. Eight laps to go. Still Rossi leading the way. Round through 10, 2, 3 and 4. 